I am often asked what is the difference between sex and gender. Sex and gender are distinct terms and should not be used interchangeably. Editors of peer-reviewed journals need to hold the line on this. In six words, sex is biology and gender is culture. We define these terms quickly and efficiently on our website, and I encourage you to have a look. Here is our section on terms. What is sex? Sex is a biological quality or classification of sexually reproducting organisms, generally female, male, and or intersex. It is estimated that about half the population are female and half male and one to two percent intersex. Sex is a constellation of biological attributes that derive from sex chromosomes, reproductive organs, and specific hormones. There may be considerable overlap in female and male phenotypes, especially for secondary sex sexual characteristics. Importantly, every cell has a sex. In most studies conducted, tissues can be classified as male or female by the sex chromosomal complement and for experimental animals by the sex chromosomes and anatomical features. What then is gender? Gender is a sociocultural process and refers to social and cultural attitudes that together shape and sanction feminine and masculine attitudes, behaviors, products, technologies, environments, and knowledges. Let me make three points. First, gender refers to cultural attitudes that are learned and vary by culture, historical era, ethnicity, social economic status, geographic location, and other factors. For example, gender attitudes and behaviors may be very different on the U.S. West Coast versus the East Coast or in Italy versus Germany. Second, feminine and masculine describe attitudes and behaviors on a continuum of gender identities. So perhaps I am more feminine at home with my family, but more masculine in the boardroom. And third, gender does not necessarily match sex. Importantly, sex and gender interact. That is to say, biological sex may influence your gender behavior and other people's attitudes toward you. Gender certainly interacts with and thus influences biology. This image from Vera Regetsogrosik shows the complex interdependency of sex, genes and hormones, and gender, that is to say factors such as diet and nutrition, throughout the human life cycle. Sex influences health by modifying behavior. At the same time, gender behaviors can modify biological factors. For example, exercise can strengthen bones, or excessive sugar intake can lead to obesity, or social discrimination can lead to stress that in turn impacts health. Even animals may have gender. Behaviors might be directed by specific stimuli, by sight or smell, in interaction with the sex of the researcher. For example, gender, even in animals, can thus influence biological outcomes, as we've learned recently in pain research. Let me say a few more words about gender. Many people think of gender as gender identity. There are at least three aspects of gender that are important to understand. These are gender norms, gender identities, and gender relations. Let me say something about each of these in turn. Gender norms are those unspoken cultural rules that silently police behavior. Gender norms draw upon and reinforce gender stereotypes, which are widely held idealized beliefs about women and men and femininities and masculinities. Gender norms and behaviors are produced through social institutions such as workplace culture, family culture, institutional policies, state and federal law, national culture, and global culture. An individual is born into a gender system, which, as I said before, changes over time and place.
Individual behavior is shaped by the workplace, for example. And what we're interested in in each example here is how gender norms influence science and technology. If, for example, I work in a com company with no critical awareness of gender, I may unconsciously use all male rats in experiments aimed at drug development. The unconscious bias in my workplace can lead to failed research. My research may also be influenced by university policies. Perhaps my university provides seed grants to support understanding gender in machine learning, for instance. This policy can help me develop algorithms that will lead to products, such as machine translation, that will work for a broad group of users. The same is true of state and federal policy and national culture. We can think of the influence of national television and media. And finally, we live in a global culture, which will influence the kind of gender norms I might design into transportation systems and the like. You can see our case studies for more examples. Gender norms, then, are those unspoken attitudes and behaviors that press in on an individual from the time you are born throughout your productive working life. We are unconsciously governed by gender norms, and these norms influence what we discover and the technology that we create. We turn now to gender identity. Gender identity refers to how individuals and groups perceive and present themselves and how they are perceived by others. Please remember that gender identities are context-specific. I may behave with particular gender identity when in my workplace with my students. I may exhibit a different gender identity at home with my children or husband. I may display certain gender behaviors in California and different ones in Brussels or elsewhere in Europe. Gender norms are different in these places, and I will adjust my behavior and identity accordingly. We now come to gender relations. Gender relations refer to empirical observations of the actual roles women and men take on and how they interact in a particular cultural and social context. Gender relation refers to the power relations between individuals of different gender identities. Gender relations mediate relations between men. Each man will have a somewhat different gender identity. Gender relations mediates relations between women and women, between women and men, and between transgender individuals and men, for example. What I have described here is discussed in our section on terms, and we also have a section on methods. To understand how sex and gender influence science and technology, you need to study the gendered innovation methods. The goal here is for us to understand sex and gender so that we can consciously harness the creative power of sex and gender analysis for discovery and innovation.